Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. So, I mean, just touching on some of the experiences you had, I mean, settling into a new team, new city, new cultures and environments and finding your role on a team. How have you kind of, you know, leveraged that and, and, and handled those situations? I think by year five or six, it gets a little bit easier, but you know, those the first <laughs> couple of years are a bit, uh, a bit stressful. I was fortunate my rookie year to have had a roommate who I went to college with, uh, Carlton Belmar. Um, he was at Swope. I got released from Dallas after being drafted there. And uh, that, that, that night I was in Carlton's apartment and he was my roommate for the year. So it was an easy transition. Somebody who had two or three years of professional experience already under their belt. He was able to kind of show me the ropes on, you know, kind of how to act as a professional. And I wasn't going off just a drawing board of, okay, like just figure it out. So that mm-hmm. helped a lot my first year. And, and then, you know, your second year, you bounce back, you expect some things to happen that, you know, maybe don't. And then you're going to a new team at the end of the year, injuries, whatnot. Like, but I think for me over the years, it's just been, how can I, you know, involve myself in the team as much as possible, just in the locker room, just with guys on the team off the field. Uh, the, the better you do that, I think it makes your life easier just on the field because you're, you're happier going to the field. You know, you have those allies just even in the locker room that, you know, if you're not having a great day, somebody else will pick you up or even a text message, you know, saying something along the lines of, Hey, just keep going is means the world. And sometimes when you put yourself in situations in different locker rooms, you might not have that. Yeah. So for me, I think that's kind of been my, my motto is just been going into it and just trying to get myself involved with guys on the team as much as possible. Is that something you picked up when you first jumped in the professional game or you've always had this, you know, throughout college, or even as a kid, when you were training with Alberts and Ngachi going out um, of town? I think to it's something I've more picked up as I've been pro. I think uh, as funny as it is, like usually you have that kind of from the youth side, but, and then as you turn pro, it's a little bit more, uh, you're a little bit more by yourself when you're a pro you know it is your job you know it's Mm -hmm. not anybody else's job it's your job to then provide food and on the table and and stuff like that but I think for me it's just helped also keep that like a little bit of not I don't want to say joy but that little bit of youth to it a little bit of that youth academy type feel that uh that it is still a game that it is still something that you do love to do and that you are here because you do love the sport. So I think that's been, you know, the people you surround yourself with are pretty much are how you're going to feel on a daily basis. So if I was able to, you know, get myself into a good group of the guys on the team, I knew that it was probably going to end up being like a pretty decent year for myself. And you mentioned the FC Dallas, you got drafted by them, but they didn't wind up picking you up. Walk us through, um, first off, getting drafted by them and then going into preseason. Um, and a lot of our European listeners here, getting drafted is, it's like an invitation to, it's like a trial. Yeah, it's an invitation it's, to trial. Right, right. Um, I'd say unless you're probably like one of the first 10 picks in the draft, it's mm-hmm. an invitation to trial. Um, no, it, was, it was a great experience for me. I, I really had like that's kind of where my eyes first went like wide. I was like, wow, this is, this is the next level. This is how, what it's, what it takes on a daily basis. You're doing two a days pretty much right away. So you're in the thick of it from day one. Um, and then I was fortunate enough to, you know, make it past probably that first little like couple of weeks. Um, and then I was there for probably like two and a half months. And then, uh, wow we went to Argentina for like 12, 14 days and played some teams down there, which was unbelievable. Lucky enough, we got to play a lot of their first teams because they were in the middle of a television strike. So they were still, you know, they were starting their season a little bit later to get all of that sorted. So we were able to play a lot of the first team guys, which was just crazy experience. And then, uh, yeah, after a 14 hour flight, from Buenos Aires to Dallas I get off the plane coach says can I speak with you I said yes absolutely 
he says, yeah, we're going to let you go. Um, you're going to go to Oklahoma City because that's our affiliate. I said, ah, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> I already have a pre-contract with Swope that if this didn't work out, I'm going there. And there was about a couple hours there of people saying, we didn't know this. How didn't you know this? Mix and match with, you know, agents telling some things, leaving some things out. So, yeah, by five o'clock that night, I was in Kansas City. But it, it was a wow. great experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very quick. a quick very, turn of events. Yeah, yeah. quick turnaround. 6.15 in the morning landed from Argentina. An hour of, you know, <laughs> figuring stuff out over the phone. Like, what's going on? Am I going to OKC or am I going to Swope? Um, exit medical flight in Kansas City. Wow. I guess that's kind of your first taste of the uh, the politics and the bureaucracy of the game, too, though. It's like it's a yeah. real learning learning it's, introduction it's there. definitely yeah the learning curve is pretty exponential i'd say and you <laughs> yeah. just gotta strap on and just say all right i'm in it yeah. let's just drop yeah. with it from here yeah, yeah. absolutely speak speaking of that learning process i mean you spend a lot of time with the the first team and on these trips as well yeah. what was some of the big switches that you saw like okay i i need to work i need to improve this this is the standard uh yeah i'd say just like the little details and the finite things of the game you know body positioning like always being on point with being prepared for that next move for what what are you doing to set yourself up so that you're anticipating and you're not reacting because at that level that that split second is the difference it's not so much oh because yeah, 90% of the guys throughout all three of these leagues can hit a diagonal, can, you know, win a header, can dribble past two or three people. But it's the that little split second of the decision making of, am I going or am I staying? Am I, am I playing the ball through or am I keeping it? And I'd say that's where I really realized for the first time, like those little decisions are what add up into making a an elite level player more than the others i mean you've had some one-year contracts too but this level of uncertainty has got to be tough throughout the years i mean when going into those those i guess those meetings or those time periods when the the discussion of an option is coming up what are those feelings like because i mean throughout the year you're working for that next contract really so i mean what is that uncertainty like for you yeah, I'd say it's the like it's the stability, or I should say the lack there of stability. Um, mm -hmm. That is probably the most strenuous on your mind. Um, you know, you you see it very early, and I I saw it very early from my rookie year. That as soon as it comes to be this time period now, late August, early September, you know, half your team's probably not coming back. Uh, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, but half your team's not coming back. So it comes down to what are, what are, what are those guys' mentalities like going into a final stretch of the season? Are they bought in? Are they willing to give, you know, that little extra effort for the team or are they really kind of just trying to figure out their own next step, which you can't really blame them for either because, you know, it is their job. Some people do have families in, in the leagues and stuff like that. So people have, priorities that they have to think about first um but for me it was just i think just the the lack of stability is something that you know hopefully through this players association that we can gain a little bit more traction on that end and you know maybe that maybe these maybe there are more player options maybe it's not just up to the team if you come back or not maybe there can be like a meeting of the minds of saying okay you want me back i want to be back let's sort this out in mm -hmm. a proper way. Um, maybe that is, an, you know, two year plus one. I haven't seen many of those, but, you know, they do exist. It's not like they don't exist in the league. It's just, I'd say, with ownership and the turnover, it's tougher to get those types of contracts. And the last thing I want to touch on before we wrap it up is you've been tactically able to play in many positions, uh, on different teams and different styles under different coaches. Yeah. Um, how have you been able to do this? And um, how do you think it's helped the success of your career thus far? I think it's been, 
probably like it's it's what makes me I think that's one thing that separates myself from the rest of the guys that might be gunning for a center back position or a defensive mid position or an outside back position is that you know signing me you can get all three um, my versatility has been something I've always prided myself on even like in school I've played a bunch of different positions which I think set me up for having this ability and this mentality to I've always thought about it as I'm just going to play football just in this little area of the field. Okay. Now I just have to play football a little bit higher up in this little area in the field. Um, I don't think many of the things, yeah, there's, you know, different nuances of the positions that are, uh, that are maybe easier to learn when you're in that position for an extended period of time. But at this, at the end of the day, I've just always thought about it as I just have to go play my game in this area of the field um i think when you overthink the position and you overthink what the coach is thinking putting you there why is he putting you there why isn't he putting me here you find yourself drowning already before the game's even started um so i think being able to just uh separate the those feelings and those emotions from playing the actual position has been probably like super beneficial for my uh success great insight for you young players out there i think that's yeah a, a hey, play as many positions as you can like, yeah. yeah it's only gonna make you better it's only gonna help mm-hmm. you see the game from a different perspective you know playing center back what do what do i need as a center back from a defensive midfielder oh what would i want what like what would I want to be doing there so you're able to see it from both sides you know like Mm -hmm. I think it helps your game I really do yeah I think it helps your game tremendously and young players should be playing a bunch of different positions you shouldn't be 11 years old saying I'm a winger and I'm only a winger because (laughs) couldn't agree more there's only two wingers on the field yeah yeah exactly who knows Yeah, yeah I I couldn't agree more it's and I think the, the I love that point. Uh, it's like position. I don't know if this is a term, but I might try and coin it is like positional empathy. You yeah. know exactly as a center back, like you just said, what does my six want? You know, because you've been in that position as a center back, position. vice versa, yeah. to know where I should be or where he should be. Yeah. No, I, I like I said, I, positional empathy. I love that. You should coin that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're taking that one. That is a good one. It's coined on this one. Taking that to it's the cool. bank. Yeah. Yeah.